Hi, uh, let's just jump right into it. It's skin cancer, melanoma. I've actually had it before. This is my second time with melanoma, but this time it's bigger. And because of that, and because it's the second time, it's scarier. I thought about keeping this private. I Believe it or not, as much as I love coming and talking to you, this is private and it's something I've been dealing with, but early detection saved my life the first time. I'm sitting here today because of early detection from the time I had it nearly 10 years ago. And I'm hoping that early detection saves my life again this time. There's also groundbreaking new surgery I wanna tell you about that I'm going through and it's increasing my chances of survival and it could increase yours too with early detection. So as I tell my story, the only thing I ask of you is to think of your own bodies while you're watching this. Think of every mark, every mole you have as you're watching this. Let's save your life. If you've been watching Rossin Reports, maybe you've seen that brown spot right there on my forehead, but it wasn't glaring. You can see it just looks like a regular mole. Even in my personal photos, you can barely see it. In fact, my dermatologist said it was nothing to worry about, but this last visit, he said it looks a shade darker, may have changed shape a little. So he took a biopsy and days later he called me. And he said, it's melanoma, your melanoma's back. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. If, if you aren't aware, melanoma is the most dangerous, the worst kind of skin cancer you can have. An estimated 7,180 people will die this year alone from melanoma. Today, right now, every hour, two people are dying. Now I'm fighting for my own life. I recorded my consultation with my surgeon. So you have an early melanoma in situ. Okay, it's stage zero, very early, which is good. We make some cuts here and here. We're gonna slide the skin forward. You're gonna be left with a scar that's gonna be this long, most likely, okay? I'm gonna have a scar here. Yep. To get the cancer out of me, they're performing a really cool surgery called Mohs surgery. Now, skin cancer is a little like an iceberg, right? You can see the tip of it above the surface, but most of it exists beneath the surface that you just cannot see. Uh, most surgery is the most effective way to get that tumor out and removes all traces of cancer cells near it. The surgeon removes a circular shaped piece of skin around the cancer. That piece of skin is then examined with a microscope right there in the OR, right there, just a room away, while I'm still laying on the table. A week later, it was time for my surgery. They numbed the area, but I'm awake for all of it. And you know me, I'm questioning the doctor the whole time. It's a little gory, so I'm blurring it. So what I'm doing now is removing the central portion of the tumor. And I look at that central portion of the tumor to see if the tumor is any deeper than the original diagnosis. Turns out they have to cut wider and deeper than I first thought, slicing a chunk out of my face around the size of a quarter. Trust me, you don't want to see what's underneath this picture. Then it's time to look at my cells through that microscope. It's evaluated in real time, like in it's going to be evaluated today while I'm sitting here. Exactly. It takes about, I would say, you know, two hours to evaluate everything or to pre prepare the slides. And, and if you still see cancer cells, <laughs> then what? Then I go back and I remove the portion of skin that has the remaining skin cancer. So you basically won't close me up today until I'm clean. That is 100% correct. Exactly. My surgery was a little less than two weeks ago. And as I sit here today, I am thrilled to tell you that I am officially cancer free. They got everything because of that Mohs surgery. They can tell me without a doubt that they searched everything around it, in it. They went as deep as they had to and went as wide as they had to to get all the cancer cells out. So uh, I feel great about that. But I am left with a scar. There is no getting around that. And I can show you it's right over here. I don't think it's too gruesome. I've been out in public. I, I just took my bandages off. So this is even a little weird kind of showing this because I've been walking around like this. But there it is, and I got 40 stitches. I have 40 stitches in here. Some of them have dissolved. I have to get the remaining stitches out next week. But they tell me, this is what it looks like. They tell me that in six months, it'll barely be visible. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm proud of the scar. Um, I don't mind it. I, I did in the beginning. When I, I was pretty devastated when I heard I'm out of a scar on my face for the rest of my life. But I'm proud of this because it, it shows that I found something early. I, I have little kids. I, I want to be around for them. I have a wife I want to be around for. And I, I'm just thrilled 
to have this if it means that I'm alive. So right now, I want you to think of your children. I want you to think of your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, anybody you love. And look at them too. Hey, I see a mark there. That, that doesn't look right. I want you to think of them because if you're lucky, if they're lucky, you'll be sitting right in this chair one day and you'll have a scar, but you'll be alive.